The lesson is titled, Love Your Neighbor. Yeah. Hallelujah. Our focus verse is um, Luke 10, 37 through, 10, 36 through 37. And I'll be reading that along with all the lesson text itself. Lesson text, Leviticus 19 and 18, Matthew 22, 34 through 40, Luke 10, 25 through 37, and Galatians 5, verses 13 through 15. Leviticus 19 and 18 reads, Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, I am the Lord. Matthew 22, 34 through 40. But when the, when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Luke 10 verses 25 through 37. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit, inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he willingly to justify himself said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance, there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wounds pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now, which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, he that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, go and do thou likewise. Galatians 5 and 13 through 15. Can I get a reader for that one, please? Galatians 5, 13 through 15. Galatians 5, 13 and 15. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Amen. Thank you, Lady D. Appreciate that. Thank you for the reading of the scripture. You may be seated at this time. I truly stand and give honor to God. Truly, I thank and praise God just for 
being in the midst on tonight. I give honor to my husband in his absence, to our pastor and evangelist, First Lady D, Pastor McKinnon, my mom, Evangelist Selvi, all the saints of God in the house on tonight, and all that are viewing on media land. Again, our series is Loving the Unloved, and the lesson topic is Love Your Neighbor. Now, of course, all the topics have been great, but this is an awesome topic as well. <laughs> awesome. So we're all in this together now. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> all right. So as we go along. Now, now, if we, as we've read the scriptures, um, we heard Jesus talk of the two greatest commandments and uh, two of those scriptures there. Now, if we do not understand who Jesus considers to be our neighbor, how can we fulfill the two greatest commandments that was given to us? Question, or something for us all to think about. If we do not understand who Jesus considers to be our neighbor, how can we fulfill the two greatest commandments? Now, in the law of Moses, which is also known as the Mosaic laws, uh, there was about 613 of those laws and the Ten Commandments written, you know, at that time, those are considered like the first five books of the, uh, the Bible. Now, amongst all those laws and those Ten Commandments written, the greatest two commandments were as follows. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. That's in Deuteronomy 6 and 5. That second commandment was to love thy neighbor as thyself, Leviticus 19 and 18. Now these were the two laws Jesus was also referring to when he was talking to the um, religious lawyer there in Matthews 22, 37 through 40. So tonight, the Selah question is, who is considered our neighbor? Who is considered our neighbor? Now, at a natural standpoint, we, we automatically say, oh, the neighbor is the one that lives next to me or across the street from me or down, you know, a block or two or maybe in the cul-de-sac from me or, you know, someone in my subdivision or, you know, oh, that one that lives in apartment 39, in 41, you know, right next to us. That's a natural standpoint. Now, everyone that's sitting here tonight, everyone that's under the sound of my voice on tonight has a neighbor. A neighbor is simply a fellow man. And we know man falls under woe man, but I'm gonna say fellow man, fellow woe man. Basically, your neighbor is, our neighbor is, all of mankind. And again, we often associate the word neighbor with those that's living in close proximity, you know, with us. And sometimes, you know, few other people, we still have to consider them neighbors also. Not just the one that lives right next to you. We have to consider our neighbors the co-workers, that's two cubicles down from us at work, that chatty um, individual in the line, that long grocery store line, you know, that, um, that homeless person that stands up on the street corner that holds a sign up to say, help, I'm hungry. And lastly, I know this one gonna blow some minds. Lastly, we, the one we deem the most difficult one to love, our enemy, yeah, yeah. our enemies. I'm put an S on it because you know we got many yeah. enemies. They are also our neighbors. Now, and as born again believers, our command is to love and do it without discriminating. Imagine Jesus saying, "We're gonna leave the Gentiles out. Uh, you know, we're gonna even leave the Samaritans out because." You know, that's what the Jews wanted. They, they really didn't want any part with the Samaritans because they was considered 
um, well, they was actually hated by the Jews. To the Jews, they were considered mixed breed and mixed religion, you know. Um, so we call them half breeds, and you know, uh, they go to church somewhere else. That's that's what we'll say. But to the Jews, that's what the Samaritan was considered. So they and they actually hated the Samaritans. Now, if the Samaritan had only loved those who were like him, as we, if you read a little farther in Luke, you um you would have read about why the Samaritan had stopped. You know, the man coming up from um, Jericho to Jerusalem, or Jerusalem to Jericho, was actually robbed. He was robbed, beat, and left for half dead. Now, if the Samaritan had only loved those who were like him, would there have been a chance he would have stopped that day or that evening to help the fellow that had got beaten and robbed and left half dead? The Levite passed him up. Levite, teacher in the temple. He was like, uh-uh, I got to be on time. I got to make sure this down. I got to do this. I got to, um, by chance you be there when I get back, I'll holler at you. <laughs> the Levite now, temple worker. And you know, you know, priests came right on. And, and the thing about it is, I, I was sitting there saying, Lord, they seen a man in need but walk right past as if, this is what, this is my opinion, as if the man in need was trash or a piece of debris that belonged in the ditch or in the area where he was laying. The Levite, the priest, oh, sound like church goers to me. Uh, Listen to the word now, church goers. There's a difference. There's a difference. Save all that extra time, and there's a difference. Church goers. Got a lot of them nowadays. Just gone. Jesus. All right, let's get back. Let's get back. Again, if that Samaritan had not stopped, what have, we, what have been the chance that that man probably would have lived? Now, this is something for all of us to think about. When I say us, we're, we're, we're abroad. Everyone under the sound of my voice. What if we have passed by someone that was in great need of our help, but we had to be at a certain place at a certain time, and it could have been us that kept this person alive, prayed this person through, or caused God to change the heart of that individual. And I say that because I'm a living witness. Um, years ago, one of my coworkers, she, um, we talked almost every other day. She, I hadn't heard from her, so I got a little alarmed and went over to the house and um, knocked to the neighbor. Her neighbor came and the neighbor said, um, oh, she called her name, she's, um, she was, she's in the hospital. They had to rush her to the hospital. Found out um, her cancer had come back and spread it and she was found unconscious in the house. And um, went to see her. Uh, she couldn't say anything. They had her on the machines and everything. And I was getting ready to go, and this is a few days after the fact, I was getting ready to go to church and um, I called my pastor and I said, Pastor, so and so, so and so, um, hey, just gonna let you know I'm gonna be running a little late today. The Lord laid on my heart to go to the hospital, at this time it was Trinity Hospital, and uh, pray with and for, you know, an individual. He said, oh, okay, dog, ain't no problem, ain't no problem. I went on, you know, and I got there, the guy had given me, tell her to prepare for her trip. And he gave me the parable of packing luggage for your trip. And I went in, she was on the tube. She never, she never said hi, Tammy, or anything. And I sat with her and talked with her. And I touched her and I said, well, you know I'm on a mission. And I remember her eyes, she, her eyes did. 
And I said, I began to tell her what the Lord said. She never said a word, but tears were streaming down her face. And I told her, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. And I, I told her this. I said, I know you're going home, but I'm mad at you because you beat me. You beat me out here. And she looked at me and she, even with the two, she had dimples. You can see the formation in the dimples. And I said, girl, I love you. I love you. I said, you're going to be all right. I told her about her children going to be okay. She had a, a two, three-year-old son at the time and teenagers. They're going to be okay. And I got ready to go. Now, she never moved or did anything other than her eyes and the half smile there. When I got ready to go, I said, hey, I got to go because I did tell the pastor that I'm going to be running a bit late. I want to get in on the service. She grabbed my hand, but she never said anything. And I said, oh, sweetie, I wish I could stay. I said, I wish I could stay. And I remember kissing on the forehead. Come on to church. You know, rough time. Came on to church, and um, the pastor met me in the back. He said, um, Daughter, how's everything going? I said, well, just pray for her family. And due to my surprise, he said, so do you really think that was the will of God to have you at the service to go and pray for a coworker? This was someone who wore the collar, the priest. That coworker was that one laying there, beaten and robbed and left for half dead. And the priest come to ask the little church worker, do I think it was the will of God or God saying? But you know what little, you know little church worker said? I know it was. I know it was. I'm just an usher. It's not like, you know, I had to get up and do this and that. But I say that because there's many times we have left that person on the roadside. We see it all the time. And it doesn't have to necessarily be church. It could be work. It could be whatever you're focused on trying to get there. Amen. There are people that we are passing by. And God is saying stop. Now God is saying stop. God is saying stop. Now sometimes we'll say I want to stop because I don't want to go nowhere. Now you, you just wrong on that. But God is saying, stop, help, be that good Samaritan. The love of God will cause you to stop. And you know, nowadays we, we really can't weigh it as far as those holding the signs for food because we know there are so much, many scams out there. Truly, I, I don't give them money, but I sure will go buy them something to eat. I bought one, one of them at Walmart some chicken he was looking at me like he couldn't take no more chicken. <laughs> I, this is a true story. He looking at me like everybody gave me chicken. Popeye's right down the corner. I'm like, you know what? Hey, I love you in the Lord, but I ain't, I ain't breaking off no money. Because, see, I, I'm not going to be a, a contributor to your drug habit, to your drinking habit, to whatever habit. Now, I'm going to get you something to eat. I will do that. Me and my granddaughter draining on over to the Popeye's and... And next thing I know, he's sitting out there by the baskets. We looking for him. He's sitting by the baskets already with some Popeyes. So I told him, I said, oh, I see you done got blessed already. Was that a little too slow? So he said, oh, no. well, uh, oh, I had my share. I said, save it for later. Save it for later. You're going to need it for later. You know, um, save it for later. Yes, we have to be wise in what we're putting out. We have to be wise in what we're hearing. I knew that was God saying go. But you know Satan speaks too. Right. He'll speak too. Yeah. You know, you ain't really need it. You know, I, but you got to know the difference. That's what discernment come in at. You got to know the difference. You know, and I told the pastor, I said, well, I, I know it was God. I went on and had a merry time in the service. But we don't know who 
God is going to put along the pathway for us to stop. Question again. Is it possible to fully love God and dislike or hate your neighbor? The neighbor, again, is your fellow man, all mankind. Is it possible? No, I go ahead and answer that one for you. It's not possible to fully love God right. to, and hate or dislike, because I, I, I think both of them are the same, but for, you know, some that say, well, hate is a little bit stronger. Either way, it's sin. So, no, it's not possible. You either fully love God and fully love your neighbor. Now, I'm going to tell you about that enemy stuff. It's rough. But I, I'm, I'm going to get there. I'm going to say this because it's, it's good to you. It's good. It's good. It was good to me. It blessed me. To genuinely love God and all mankind is the fulfilling of the law. Now, we talked about these two laws here. To genuinely love God and all mankind is the fulfilling of the law. To break it on down, if you keep these two laws, you will have fulfilled all the laws of Moses, and what the prophet said. That's where um, Matthews 25 and um, Matthews 22, I'm sorry, in verse 40 is saying, they hang up on the, all the law and the prophet. Now let's go back to the Samaritan, the one that stopped, you know, the one that stopped to help the, um, the wounded individual. Now we know the Samaritans, they were hated by the Jews, as I said earlier, because they was considered mixed breed. They, um, Perform. They um, only kept the, the first five books of Moses and did something else, you know, lived another religious lifestyle with the other portion of the word. And um, another thing I learned about them too was um, the Jews were in opposition with them also because when the Jews was rebuilding the wall and the temple, you know, over in Jerusalem, uh, they, the, um, the, the Samaritans had opposition against them doing that. They were doing everything they could do to ensure that that wouldn't happen. And you can find out more detail of that in Nehemiah uh, chapter 6, verses 1 through 14. Now Luke 10 and 30 through 37 tells us that it was the Samaritan that had compassion for his fellow man. And we know um, sometimes when we hear the word mercy, we know mercy is when God steps in and hold back what's really for us, but he hold it back and he have mercy. But if you take a little bit farther, mercy is also having, displaying, or showing compassion. Take a little bit farther, compassion is to love, or compassion is love. So as we look at that, the Samaritan had compassion for his fellow man. And we learned that the fellow man is our neighbor. Not one time did the Samaritan think about the race of the individual. He didn't think about the um, religion of the individual. He didn't look over there and say, oh, oh no, that ain't for me. He just saw a man who needed help, and he did just that. He did the righteous thing. He helped. Now, Matthew 25, verses 31 through 40, is in line in what the Good Samaritan did here. It tells us about when I was in jail, you fed me. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was in jail, you visited me. When I was hungry, you fed me. Those things. It's in line with what the, the Good Samaritan did. And how many of us know, now this is another question, say a lot question. It's easy to love those who are good to us yeah. Yeah. and love those who love us back. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah I, that was say a lot. I to think about that one. Okay, I heard a lot of yes on the floor. I heard a lot of yes on the floor. Yes, it is. So easy. Now the song said you're easy to love. So easy. Yeah, they, that's what they say, so easy. Yeah, but they need to throw something in them lines where, you know, some of them singing, uh, there was a, um, it's a song, it come, I hear it every Saturday, I mean, that I'm listening to the channel, I hear, 
And he said, my mama told me, son, do you know you can, you can sing a lot just as well as you can tell a lie? <laughs> Some of them singing a lie. Yeah. So easy to love. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody singing a lie. So easy to love. Those who love us and those who are good to us. But one thing about God in our lesson text on tonight, Neighborly love, that love of God, that's neighborly love. Now, it requires us to have love for all mankind, whether they love us back or they're good to us or not. Now, neighborly love includes loving everybody. That means to love the good and the bad the gay and the straight, to love the saint or the ain't, the adulterer, the prostitute, the denominational, the non-denominational, those who are purposely, those who purposely harm you, those who are considered your enemies. The list goes on and on and on. But you know what? We must love them all. We must love them all. Jesus tells us in Matthew 5 and 44, he tells us this. Now, I, you know, the thing about it is, since Jesus said it, you, you know, we need to be obeying the Bible in this entirety anyway. But when Jesus says some things, he means everything he's saying. But when he specified, this is what I want you to do. We have to fall in line with that. Matthew 5 and 44 says, love your enemies. Bless them that well, I'm saying us, I'm, it's, I'm gonna say us because I'm using it collectively. Love our enemies, bless them that curse us, do good to them that hate us, and pray for them which despitefully use us and persecute us. Now, as we were saying that easy to love, now, now we finna get happy on this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna throw my yes in. Now, I'll be the first to raise my hand to say that I'm a living witness that it is at times, listen to what I'm saying, at times, one of the most difficult things to do is to do what Matthew 5 and 44 says. At times, yes. at times it's the most difficult thing to do. I say I'll be the first to raise my hand at times. Now, we're going to go ahead and get our praise on. <laughs> but I'll also be the first to raise my hand and say that I am a living witness that when the love of God is deeply rooted within your heart, you can love the most difficult person there is. Now go ahead and give God praise. Hallelujah. I am a living witness. I see First Lady is a living witness. I know my mama is a living witness. Everybody in here is a living witness. Hallelujah. Everybody listening is a living witness. I'm telling you, it's something about the love of Christ Jesus. When it is deeply rooted, a root is hard to pull up. Now, it depends on how long the root been there. Hallelujah. Oh, God, help me, Jesus. It depends on how long it's been there. I had this little flower. Well, actually, it was a little weed. Yeah, thank you, Holy Ghost. I mean, I wanted to be a flower. It was a little weed. <laughs> little weed. It was in the crack of the, um, the driveway. After a good rain, you know, my, my sister always tell me, she joked with me, she said, um, she called me Sister Candy. You know they got tools now that you can chop the grass and be finished. Well, you know, I just love to pull it up, you know, pull it up and stuff like that. I mean, uh, maybe our reaction to trauma as a kid, that's what my dad made us do, pull the weeds up. And it, it just never left me. So that particular day I went to pull, and I'm so good, I, I try to make sure I don't tear it. <laughs> and a good rain had come and I pulled it up. The weed was no taller than this. No taller than this. 
pulled it on out. Coming up, I'm like, Jesus, coming up. Ruth was about this long. Uh-huh. I'm trying to make sure on social media you can see this. About this uh-huh. long. The root. So I'm like, my God, how did I get this up like that? Yeah. I mean, I, I may have torn something, but just to see that little weed with that long root planted. So when I say, when the love of God is deeply rooted in you, I ain't talking about that eros on that top surface, uh-huh. that, that, that inside, that agape, agape love, when it's deeply rooted in you, I'm a living witness. You can love the most difficult person there is. Yeah. And I promise you, when it's like that, it's not false love. People will say, you crazy. You know they done talked about you. And you gonna do this and you gonna do that. You crazy. Girl, you spending all your money. You crazy. They just using you. You crazy. Ah, the agape love of God. That's right. I tell you, that agape love of God will make you do right. At all times. That's a song that say make love will make you do right. And I think it say make you do wrong. I ain't, I ain't, I'm not even going on that one. The agape love of God will make you do right at all times. Hallelujah. Love your neighbor. Even that neighbor that's an enemy. You can do it in the name of Jesus. God requires us to love our neighbors as ourselves. And I I think about this. I said, well, you know, I, I, I just don't recall. Not one time have I been walking around slapping myself. I just don't recall not one time have I been walking around putting myself down. You know, sometimes you have um, depression states and you know how the spirit of depression tells you you ain't this, you ain't that. No, not one time have I took something and stabbed myself. Not one time have I been selfish to myself. And I, I use that word lightly because There are times when people who truly love people, they're willing to go above and beyond. Not because of the spotlight, because see, I could do my work in the back and and God can still still see it. They go above and beyond because for myself, I find that giving and helping others bring me joy. It really does. Not, Not the type of joy that you brag about, the joy that says, oh, God, I'm so grateful to be in a position to be a blessing. That's it, that's it. Oh, God, I'm so grateful. Not, oh, I'm so good, I got this, this, and this. All that stuff will perish. But to be a blessing, to be in a, situ- in, in a situation where you can be a blessing to others. God requires us to love our neighbors as ourselves. If we treat ourselves good, Shouldn't we strive to do good unto all men? We should. Shouldn't we hold our peace? And I know God had to work with me on this. Hold your peace, girl. I'm like, Jesus, please help me. Hold your peace. Oh, Jesus, I'm telling you, when you hold it, he'll fight it for you. He will do it. When you love your neighbor as yourself, you're not going to criticize them. You're going to take a stand for them when they're not in your presence and somebody else is criticizing them. You're going to show them a better way of seeing things. Because sometimes, you know, we can get a little foggy. I've been there. I, I've, I've been foggy at times on seeing things and still get there sometimes. By the help of God, some of the saints, the man of God, the woman of God, my mom, even Sister Tover back there, GQ, just the saints in general. Get a call sometimes, get a text. I'm like, wow. So we have to love them as we love ourselves. We should not be like that lawyer who tried to test Jesus. Neither should we be like the one who tried to justify himself. And in justifying himself, he wanted to pick and choose who his neighbor was. We got to show love at all times towards every individual. There is no, there is a difference, correction, there is a difference between who we would like for our neighbors to be 
versus to who God is saying our neighbors are. There's a difference. Because you know, um, and I, I won't say nobody in here because I, from what I can see, we love all our neighbors. We, we don't mind, you know, we're, I mean, I don't know all the most eloquent words to say, but let a visitor come in here. I, I, you know, I'm gonna find something. So we're all, we're all in that category of being sure. Not that we just show love, but that we love our neighbors. Because we have people come in over all walks of life into the ministry to hear the word, to be a part of the ministry. If I choose uh, the ones who from the country or the ones who love shopping at Walmart and because you got this section, they love to go to Macy's and over to the mall, that's sin. That is sin. We cannot pick and choose who our neighbors should be. Sometimes we do it consciously and sometimes we do it subconsciously. Either way we do it, it is sin. Because God said he would have no respect of a person, not one. I think I could um, talk to anyone that comes in here. Now, that I will look at you and say, you know, what you, what you mean? Or what you're saying? If you use a word on me, I, yeah, I said I learned that from the man of God. He'll ask you the minute, so what do you mean? But, <laughs> so what you saying? But you know, so I will ask. But when you love the neighbor that God has designed for you, that's what you do. I don't push them to the side because I don't understand their vocabulary. That's right. And I don't push them to the side because they're not loud. I don't push them to the side because they're quiet. Hey, how you doing? I'm Sister Tammy, how you doing? Hope you enjoyed the service today. And it's genuine. It's absolutely genuine. Jesus allows no room for justification when it comes to loving people. He does not allow any justification. Just as he told that religious lawyer, you know, you can't be justified about who you want to pick and choose as your neighbor. This is your neighbor. He was your neighbor. That was your neighbor laying there. That was your neighbor that you hate, that Samaritan. That's your neighbor. You cannot, God is not going to allow room for justification when it comes to us not loving our neighbors. Now, if God doesn't align the justification. Hmm. Why is it that in most churches, it's, it's justified? Hmm. Wow. All right, man. All right, that's all right. Go ahead, all right, stop. <laughs> it's, it's justified. Why? Why? Perhaps maybe the full love of God is not there. Perhaps Maybe that individual is not in tune or have that full understanding of what God love requires, perhaps. But as we are here, we reflect that love abroad. And as the viewers view, we pray that we will always reflect the love of God to anyone watching to anyone sitting in the congregation, because you are our neighbor. For the word of God is true. Romans 2 and 11 says, again, there's no respect to a person with God. Love your neighbors. Love your neighbors. Love your neighbors. Love your neighbors. And one thing about loving our neighbors, before I close out, one thing about loving our neighbor is, it's just like that weed I pulled up. We don't know how long of a root of a person has. And I'm talking about a good root. I ain't talking about that crazy stuff. A good root. Now, I say that because, to me, it was a weed. And it, it, in true life, it, it was a weed. But when we love our neighbors, we can only see a person for who they is. We can only see a person for who they is. Now, if we go further with discernment, 
we can see a little deeper. But we're talking about the outward man. We can only see who a person is so far, to a certain extent when I say so far. But God sees what that individual can be. That's why it's important to love your neighbor. Love in spite of that coworker that's actually going to the boss saying, lie, 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 lie. That brother or that sister that's on the phone saying, lie, 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 lie. That man or that woman that, now I don't have this problem because I'm a slow driver, that crossed in front of you while you was driving. Mm, I, I don't have that problem. I have some other problems, but I just don't have that <laughs> I'm not. I'm not that much in a hurry. But God sees what we can't see in, in, in those individuals. That one that's most difficult to love, oh man, that might be the one that's gonna be the, the best, um, what you call them, the, um, the best armor bearer there is. That's it, that's it. I mean, well, <laughs> what you say about the man and woman of God, I mean, well, fight tooth and nail, I mean, when needed now, Palestine. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when needed, sir. <laughs> that one might be the very one that'll stand at that door and someone come up in here, will put them in a headlock in a minute and save the lives of many in here. That's right. You just don't know. Love is easy to do. Mm-hmm. When you find it difficult, pray. That's right. Pray. I learned the best thing to do for my enemies is pray. Yes. You're going to get gray hair anyway. Why rush it? With all that wearing and stress, they be asking, why are you smiling so much? Well, I mean, I, I mean, I got to tell you that. <laughs> I, I, I just don't believe in being around moping and, you know, having a, a pity party. Man, God is good. Every affliction that I endure, oh, he's going to spare me from them. Just wait and trust him. God sees what's in that individual. If we love on them, I mean genuinely love on them, we will eventually see what God sees in them. Some are, some are hard to love. Close your eyes and just be like, oh, today they're going to be easy to love. I had a co-worker on the job. She never came to work. <laughs> I mean, you know, they, when you're honest, you're honest. And you know, this FMLA thing, they give you 80 hours per child. And she had quite a few children. They give you 80 hours per child, 80 for yourself, and 80 for your spouse. So she had quite a few children, her child, I mean, uh, her spouse and herself. Well, that's what she told me. I never used FMLA. And on the team, we had a team. And when she wasn't in, I get her calls. She told me that so-and-so, so-and-so, oh, I'm so sorry, I would get with her. So they call back next day. Sir, I would get with her. Ma'am, I would get with her. Call back a week or two later. Now they want to talk to the manager, supervisor. Because that individual has never come in. When we are team players in here, be mindful. We are on the same team. And if how the scriptures say, um, if you stomp your toe, the whole body going to feel it. That's right. So when love is being exuded uh, throughout the congregation and throughout each other, we feel that. We feel that. You know who else feels it? Our neighbors that's coming in. They feel that. They feel it. Now in my closing, God is not looking for us to be neighbors only in proximity, you know, the physical location. He's not just looking for us to be neighbors there. He's looking for us to be neighbors as well as being neighborly by displaying love, kindness, 
and mercy towards all mankind. And that love, that kindness, and that mercy needs to come straight from our hearts. Because our mouth can say, I love you, I'm kind, I'm merciful. But the heart is saying, no, you ain't. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. We have to, God wants us to be neighborly as well as neighbors. Question to, the, to all who are listening. Are we neighbors to one another? Are we neighbors to others? Are we neighbors? And are we showing neighborly love to everyone we come in contact with? Everyone. When I was in Alabama, I, I don't know, it just may have been the location, that particular, you know, city. You know, you have different, uh, demons are assigned to different locations. And this particular area, I always walked my son to school every morning. It was on the bay, you know, went too far, walked to school. And uh, I thank God for the joy he's put in, inside of me. There, there's times I do cry now. I'm not always, <laughs> but I do cry. However, we cry, get it over with. We go on in the Lord. But the joy that I truly have is from God. As I walk my son to school, every single morning we pass this um, lady, um, speak to her. She'd be looking right at you, speak to her. And so my son said, Mom, you need to stop speaking to that woman. She ain't gonna speak to us, she don't like us. You know, she was of the other persuasion, you know? And I said, uh, I said that ain't the right thing to do. She gonna speak one day. I see you mark my words, she's gonna speak one day. So one day he come home to school and I was praying for her. He said, uh, Mom, why you praying for her? She don't even like us. I said, it's okay, son. I said, you'll get it. Bye bye, you'll get it. Days went on, speak. She, like I said, we walking. Well, good morning to you, how you doing? So, you know, flesh, just tell her how she doing. Or say, why you ain't speaking? But I went on. I think it was over a month, I know it was over a month, the lady had um, passed and uh, passed us walking. And I spoke to her and she stopped. And she said, why are you always speaking to me? If I wanted to speak to you, I would do just that. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> uh, Ma'am, excuse me? And she said, if I wanted to speak to you, I would do just that. I said, ma'am, I said, God bless you, you just spoke to me. <laughs> <laughs> you just spoke to me. I take it either way. And she looked at me with so much anger and just went on. But God is my witness. That very next day, as we was walking, she looking right at us. She said, hello, ma'am, and how are you, little one? And my son was like, Mom. I said, won't God do it? You tell me. You tell me. If you continue to show love and kindness and mercy, because I could have went off on it. But for what? I am the good Samaritan here. I am the born again believer. I am the one who's filled with the Holy Ghost. I am the child of God, and she spoke. And I have a way of, of uh, saying things in a comical way to make, you know, people would laugh, but she didn't laugh. She strutted on out. And I was like, well, Lord, I'm gonna speak to her tomorrow. But she spoke, seen us and spoke, not just to me, but to the little one, my son. The love of God would do that. Yes, thank you. It draws. Right. It draws, D-R-A-W-S, it draws. Believe it or not, she could have been the most difficult person to love. I don't know how many people passed her by and said, oh, you know that Biddy, no old Biddy ain't gonna speak. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Right. But I made sure, God, she gonna speak one day. 
She gonna speak one day, and I never specified she gonna say hello one day. I said, she's gonna speak. She's gonna speak. And that's what happens when we love our neighbor. When we love those who God said, yeah, you picked that one for your neighbor, but that one down there in the gutter under the Fifth Street Bridge is your neighbor too. That's right. That's it. You know, that one that um, the pimp just paid the little cash to, that's your neighbor too. That one over there got a bad attitude and everybody's scared to go to, that's your neighbor too. You got some good ashes, send one of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's your neighbor. Every place we go, we're going to have neighbors. Every place we go, God is going to be looking at how we treat our neighbors. It's very important. The love, the kindness, and mercy is to be displayed and shown at all times to everybody. I say displayed and shown because display means to show, but displayed in this case, I got it, but I ain't showing it. You ain't got it. If you can't show it, or if you ain't showing it, you ain't got it. That same mercy is of the God that we serve. He's merciful. And that mercy of his is his mere love and compassion for all mankind. When Jesus died, he just didn't die for the, the Jews. He just didn't die for the other denominations, the other race. He died for the entire world. For he so loved the world. That means all mankind. And his love was not selfish. This is Jesus we're talking about. He could have been like, uh-uh, and I know they, ain't, they all ain't going to serve me either. He wasn't selfish with his love. He came and laid down his life. Thank you, Jesus, for little old me, that little neighbor who was lost, for the neighbors that sit amongst us and are amongst us. And that same selflessly love that he has, that's what he's requiring from us. He requires us to love our neighbors. Will we love our neighbor? Will we love our neighbor? And as I pray, Lord God, we thank you for your word on tonight, Lord God, as you've spoken to the hearts of your people and to all the hearers. Lord, let our love for you and our neighbor be sincere. Not just in word or just rolling off our tongue, oh God, but to be sincere in our heart, God. Help us, oh God, where we find difficulty to love those who are hard to love, God. Help us, oh Lord God, to show your genuine love at all times, God. Even to the deaf and the mute, oh God. By way of hugs, by way of just a simple wave, God. Now, God, as your word has gone forth on tonight, I ask that you would save on tonight, Lord God, those that are listening to your word, God. Set free and deliver, God, those that are hearing the word of God on tonight. And God, help us to be mindful that everyone, that all mankind is our neighbor. And most importantly, let us Always give our neighbors your agape love. And Father, we ask and believe this in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to have the evangelist Selby to come up and do the review. And from there, she'll turn into the hands of our pastor.